Hey, it's David Richter Scale Studios doing a update. Uh, this is kind of a weird place. I'm in my kitchen. I've been procrastinating on the CR10 uh, upgrades and modding and just got another one in the mail. Uh, this right here is a uh, step down power module. So I obviously can run my um, Raspberry Pi out of the uh, control box instead of a separate uh, adapter. And I was just testing it. So uh, this is gonna go on the PSU. Um, of course, but I don't have anything hooked in yet, so I'm gonna make sure my wire is good. So I had to uh, extend the wires, make it all clean with my uh, heat shrink tubing, and then put on these uh, spade uh, adapters. And then I have it on, ooh, this is almost falling off. And I've been obviously soldering in my kitchen. So this is my uh, soldering and works, workstation or something like that. So I have my heat gun, the soldering gun's taken off because I just used it. And I'm running 10, uh, the 12 volts. There's also another, uh, I think it runs up to 15 maybe. Yeah, up to 15 volts. So I wanna make sure uh, my connections are doing okay. So I ran it straight through the uh, module and then go into the Raspberry Pi and we have, well, I can't see there. Sorry about the glare, it's sunny today here. Let's see if I can pull that around. So we have network connection. This is the, a Raspberry Pi for the CR10. And so it's working great. And also with the uh, a power adapter, I went through all the new fans because I had to put the uh, those JST plugs, you're familiar with all the ones that you plug into the motherboard. I had to make my own for the uh, fans. So the exhaust fan and then the giant 60 millimeter cooling fan all work. So my um, uh, skills with the crimper and all that worked out and all the wires are going and everything looks safe. And then another big thing, let me come around here. Not really a big thing, but a pain in the ass. Um, drilling out the side of the box. I gotta clean that up. It's very rough inside, but to run that um, cord, the micro uh, USB cord to power this, I had to find a hole for it. There was nothing, I was gonna try to run it through here, but it was way too tight with the, uh, the Meanwell uh, power box. So I just give it its own hole. I think I might 3D print something around that to clean it up a little bit. And then I gotta uh, file it and then vacuum the inside of this thing out. So that's all going forward. Let me turn that off now. Good, so we're there. And then let's do a little thing into the uh, dining room. I've been printing Andrew Askedal's War Layer 2, his last uh, stretch goals. And these are the uh, bat towers and platforms. So this uh, has been building over the last week. So now we're at four levels. And then these are the bridges. They were called as first files from War Layer uh, their first Kickstarter, and these look perfect. So I'm coming up with a paint scheme. Um, if you've seen my vats, it's gonna be like that, like a cold gray, and I'm gonna do uh, rust under everything first. So uh, then uh, uh, do some liquid masking on it. I got, I got uh, latex and I got regular masking. I'm gonna try both. And maybe for some bigger chunks, this cut some um, painter's tape up and then uh, have bigger chunks of rust sticking out, then I'll go in and edge highlight everything to uh, bring out the um, detail. Oh, then all the platforms are gonna be uh, like construction yellow with rust and heavily weathered. So I think it'll be a good contrast. You're gonna have the cold metals with the, uh, the warm rust underneath and then the, uh, this is the yellow construction look. So everything can uh, mix and match because these are all modular. Because this is kind of insanely tall four levels and you can see these are um, the miniatures from Necromunda, House Goliath and we have a Escher ganger right there. Oh, and then another thing that's kind of cool, have you checked out the uh, 3D printable sci-fi tanks Kickstarter and these dropped about a week ago and this is the APV. This looks so good with um, the Necromunda miniatures. So just throw these on the table and they can just be, you know, line of sight blocking or they could, I don't make up your own rule, house rules or something for vehicles. But uh, that is it I've been working on. So I really gotta get to painting these. I've been printing and printing and printing. And obviously I got some of the uh, uh, pre-shading on the towers and it kind of gives it more of a 3D look. I've been like doing different, uh, like you see there, you can see the different angles. I've been hitting it black, gray, then white, then hitting back with the gray to knock back the uh, starkness of the white. Kind of gives it a cool look. So uh, that is it for this quick little update. Oh, and then I put together 
a couple uh, platforms incorrectly or I didn't need them for this setup. So I'm gonna print out two more towers and I should be done for a while. Because I, I thought there was gonna be a bridge tower and I forgot this is an open end for the stairs. So I'm gonna print, a, this is a half height stair tower. I'm gonna do a full height stair tower and then another tower and then use that uh, cap for it and then we'll be done. And we never know. Because these are uh, pretty massive, as you can see. It's just <laughs> the mm -hmm. massiveness looking at this thing is just so cool. Uh, this is my favorite stuff that I, Andrew's put out so far for playability. I like those um, from the first uh, files, the square buildings, and they came with these. Uh, those are cool too, so for like HABs. But this is so cool for industrial work. And these are like different pipe towers. And then we have another tower that we can put these valves in. And then all of his pipes that he has designed, we can run uh, pipes everywhere. This stuff is so versatile, so cool. So thank you for joining me, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.